As of the time of this posting, this channel is one subscriber away from the 500 mark, which is a pretty big milestone to me. And to commemorate that, today I'm going to tell a story that very, very tangentially connects to the number 500. See if you can find where I connect it. Today we're talking about navigation systems. These days, GPS technology is all around us. It's in our cars, our mobile phones, even on our watches. It's so ubiquitous that it's hard to imagine how we ever got by without it. Although the modern GPS system was created in 1995, car navigation systems go back further than you think. Like, a lot further than you think. One such navigation system that predates GPS began in 1983 with this guy. In case you don't recognize him, this is Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Atari and Chuck E. Cheese. And long before Elon Musk, Bushnell was the original Silicon Valley eccentric tech genius. After selling Atari to Warner Brothers, he spent his millions on expensive hobbies like traveling the world and yacht racing. In 1983, he entered his boat Charlie in Transpac, a yacht race from LA to Honolulu. And for his navigator, he hired a brilliant tech engineer named Stan Honey to develop one of the first computer-based navigation systems. One night aboard the ship, Honey and Bushnell were talking about the difficulties in navigating at sea using such limited information like star positions and Doppler shift. And as Bushnell later recalled, we joked that it would be really easy if we didn't have all this squishy stuff under us. This conversation set in motion a plan to create a computerized navigation system for cars that would not only show the driver where they were at all times, but could also store a destination and give real-time directions on screen. Bushnell would fund it and Honey would develop the system. It was ambitious and challenging, but in 1985, the ETAC Navigator hit the market. Without the use of satellites, ETAC relied on sensors such as magnetic strips on the wheels, which acted like an encoder, or digital compasses, and it used a technique called dead reckoning to calculate things such as heading. But the problem with dead reckoning is that one tiny error will cause another error and another, which can accumulate into very big errors. This system prevented that by constantly referencing digital maps stored on the computer and correcting inner errors as they arose. This might not sound that impressive, but in 1985, there were almost no digital maps in existence, so ETAC manually entered points and vectors into their system to create their own digital library. But once they had that, there was the problem of how to store it on 1980s hardware. They eventually settled on cassette tapes, each with a capacity of 3.5 megabytes. That meant that driving around the San Francisco Bay Area would require about six cassette tapes that had to be switched out constantly. You can see a full set in this photograph. Still, the system worked remarkably well, and in fact, it had some advantages over modern GPS. For example, driving through tunnels or around tall buildings was no problem for the ETAC system. ETAC quickly caught the attention of the tech world, being profiled in Popular Science and Time magazine, and even being featured in the 1991 film, Nothing But Trouble. The company was acquired by Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, who quickly sold it off to Sony, who in turn sold it to Teleatlas, Although it may have been ahead of its time, it created many of the features that are in our GPS system today. Although ETAC is widely considered to be the first automated car navigation system, that isn't exactly true. To find the first automated car navigation system, we need to travel a few thousand miles and over a thousand years in time to ancient China. More precisely, to around the year 500 AD. This is the statue of the Chinese polymath Zhu Chongxi. Chongxi made significant contributions to astronomy, mathematics, and engineering. He calculated the length of a solar year 
to within eight decimal places. And he derived a formula to accurately predict the eclipse. In mathematics, his approximation of pi was the most accurate for over 900 years. And in engineering, he nearly reinvented the wheel. Not the wheel exactly, but the first ever car navigation system. The invention was called the South Pointing Chariot, and it featured a small wooden doll that would always point in the same direction no matter how many times the car turned. It was first invented by Chinese engineer Ma Jun during the Three Kingdoms period, but nobody had seen one in almost 300 years, leading some people to speculate that it was just a legend. According to the Book of Song, however, Emperor Wu of Liu Song acquired a south-pointing chariot after defeating his rival Yao Xing, but none of the internal parts were left intact. He commissioned Zhu Chongxi to reinvent this device with no plans or schematics. Unlike a compass, this device did not use magnets, but instead, many people believe it used a complex system of gears similar to the differentials on a car. Like the ETAC system, this machine relied on dead reckoning, and it was prone to errors. But it's believed that Chongxi may have been able to minimize this by adding a switch that allowed the driver to turn it off and on. This would reduce tiny errors that would accumulate over long straightaways. Even cooler than a wooden doll that always points south is the fact that the ancient Chinese also found a way to integrate this system with a type of odometer called the Ji Li Gu Che, which involved another mechanical wooden doll that would bang a drum every five kilometers. Mechanical dolls that point out directions or maps stored on cassette tapes might seem primitive to us now, but they were cutting edge for their time. It makes me wonder what people will think of our modern GPS system hundreds of years in the future.